five daily trainers, which one is best for you? Let's find out. Hey everyone and welcome back on the channel. My name is Alex and in today's video we are doing the ultimate battle of the daily trainers for 2022. Before diving into which shoes I picked, why and so on, if you want to go follow me on Strava, there's a link in the description. I reactivated my Strava account and started uploading my activities there for a few weeks now. So if you want to connect on Strava and see what I do, let me see what you do. Um, let's just, you know, go in the description and click on that uh, Strava link. Why these five shoes? We have the New Balance 1080 V12, we have the PEG39, we have the Nova Blast 3, the On Cloud Monster and the Hoka Mark 5. I picked these five shoes because I think they're different yet um, in that same premium daily trainer category. The PEG39 not being necessarily premium but being a good benchmark. I want to have different brands, different um, weights, different drops, different stack heights, but something that um, is in that same ballpark. No plated shoes, no uh, super foams um, or more or less no super foams, nothing too maximalist, so um, I limited the max stack height for my choice and I ended up with these five shoes and I thought they are actually quite a good um, representation of what the best daily trends for 2022 may be. One of these five may correspond to you. Let's go directly into the specs and uh, let's start with the New Balance 1080 V12, 326 grams, 282, 264, 306 and 249. The Mac 4, 5 is really, really lighter than the rest and the 1080 is a bit heavier. Stack height in the heel and I said that I limited but the 1080 is the, the highest and is actually quite high. 37 millimeters in the heel, 33 for the peg, 31, 29 and 29. So these two options are a bit lower in the heel and the rest are in that uh, 30 millimeters uh, plus uh, ballpark. In terms of drops, we're looking at eight millimeters here, 10 on the peg, again, eight on the Nova, six on the Cloud Monster, but it feels way less. Uh, we'll come back to that. And five on the Mac 5. Um, width of the platform, you can go check the numbers on the Shoe Super Tool. I'll go, I'm gonna put a link somewhere here and in the description. It's a tool that we have on our website that allows you to compare shoes between themselves, all the different metrics. So go check the Shoe Super Tool. But very quickly, the most narrow platform is the Pegasus One. The widest platform is on the Mac 5. And Jure Meter scores, the hardest foam is on the Cloud Monster although it doesn't really feel like it. And the softest foam is on the Nova Blast 3. Prices, it starts at 120 uh, and here I'm giving you MSRPs. Um, so, you know, the prices that are recommended by the brands. You can find good deals with those shoes at our partners, EU and US, Top for Running, Running Warehouse. Use code META for Top for Running. It's in the description, but I'm giving you prices that you find when the shoe are releasing. 120 here is the lowest price and 180 for the Clown Monster is the the highest. And now let's go into the section you are all waiting for. What I measured with the Runscribe pod, so all those um, metrics that uh, I measured at a very easy pace, so 5, 25, 5, 30 minutes per kilometer pace, uh, 8.30, 9 minutes per mile, really easy, relaxed pace for me and something that I believe these shoes are designed to be doing uh, most of the time. They can pick the, the pace um, up if you need them to, but they're designed to go at easy paces on a daily basis because they're daily trainers. So paces for the five shoes I ran 1.2 kilometers. Um, I mean, I ran more in all of them before, but for the, this specific test, 5.33 minutes per kilometer, 5.24, 5.27, 5.29 and 5.30. So as you you can see very close in terms of paces I ran um, at. Cadence, we're looking at 165, 167, 168, 166 and 166. Slightly higher cadence in the Nova Blast and very low cadence in general. I have a low cadence when I'm running at easy paces and I go up to 180, 183 at 10k pace. So I'm more of that stride uh, runner, just so you know, if you're new here on the channel, midfoot, forefoot striker, that's um, what I am. Let's look at responsiveness. And for that, we have a proxy metric, which is uh, contact time. And here the lowest contact time is on the Nova Blast. So it's the most responsive shoe. The sort of least responsive shoe is the Mac 5. We'll explain why that's the case, but um, it's the one that has the uh, highest uh, contact time. So you're spending the most time with the Mac 5. I'm spending the most time 
being in contact with the ground with this shoe compared for instance with the Nova Blast. The three others are very similar to 69, to 64, to 61, to 64, to 75. Let's look at bounciness and for that we have a proxy metric as well and that's the amount of time between max pronation and toe off. So here we have, I'm gonna give you the numbers and explain which one is the bounciest but 212 milliseconds 200, 193, 203, and 206. So based on that, um, the lowest MPTO time is um, on the Nova Blast, and so that's the bounciest shoe, and that correlates quite well with my feelings. The least bouncy shoe, if uh, that makes sense, so the one that bounces um, the least is the 1080 V12. And again, here I think it correlates quite well with um, my subjective feelings. Efficiency, and for that we're looking at power, so the amount of power that you are uh, producing to sustain a certain speed speed, a certain pace, so the lower the better, um, or at least the lower the more the most, um, the more efficient, sorry, 215 watts to 16 watts, 220, 211, and 206. So the most efficient shoe is the Mark 5, and same here, I think that I have an explanation for that. I'm gonna give it to you right now. That's because it has the, the biggest rocker, and basically I'm striking more towards the heel, and the numbers confirm that. And so I'm spending more time in contact with the ground, highest ground contact time, but I'm also quite efficient because that uh, midfoot roll makes me a bit more efficient than, for instance, the Nova Blast, with which I am more stomping on my forefoot and losing a bit of energy because of that uh, less efficient type of uh, gait cycle compared to the Mach 5. Shock. And here we're looking at basically the metric that uh, correlates to leg pounding. So the lower the number, uh, the least pounding you have on your legs. So the more leg protect protecting the shoes are. Here the, the value is in Gs and we have 11.9, 12.6, 13.1, 11.5 and 13.4. So again, here the Mac 5, Mac 5 is a bit different and I think that's because the uh, subjective feeling and the way the foams react under your feet is less of that compression feeling and less of that um, leg protection feeling with the Mac 5. Whereas for instance, the Cloud Monster, I mean, it has the clouds, you can see the clouds. The clouds are compressing a lot and I think that um, saves your legs quite, uh, quite a bit. A foot strike type, and that's quite interesting. So it's a metric provided by the Ronscribe pods, um, you have to imagine that zero is here, 15 is here, and so the Ronscribe pods give you a value between zero and 15, indicating where is your foot strike, and that can uh, be useful to compare your, your foot strike between the different shoes. So I'm more of a midfoot foot four foot striker, and I have a 10.3 here, so somewhere around, you know, here I'm striking. Um, 965, so more towards the heel, 10.7 in the Nova, 10 with the Cloud Monster, and 9 with the um, Mac 5. So the Mac 5 is the shoe I am striking the most with my with my heel or towards the heel at least, because you can go way more um, back towards the heel. If I had, for instance, a 4 or a 5 out of 15, here it's a 9. And again, there's absolutely no issue being a heel striker. That's absolutely not what I'm meaning here. Everyone has different gait cycles, and it's very good to be a, a heel striker, a midfoot striker, a forefoot striker. Um, and the shoe I'm striking the most towards the forefoot is the Nova Blast 3. Pronation, so that's the basically the angle um, at which you are, uh, I am pronating. So the higher the angle, the more pronation I have with a shoe. 17.4 degrees and it's minus 17.4, but just for the sake of, um, for, un of the, for the video to make it easier, I'm saying 17.4 degrees, 19.6, 18.4, 19.2 and 16.6. So the lowest um, pronation angle is with the Mach 5 and the highest one is with the Pegasus 39. Last but not least, pronation velocity. So you have the angle, but you also have the speed at which you are um, going through that angle. The higher the angle, the, the more likely you are to um, have an injury. At least that's what the studies show. So this is to be taken with a grain of salt, of course, uh, but um, that's, that's, I think, interesting. So here we're, we're talking the, the metric is in degrees degrees per second, so how many degrees you are um, traveling per second. 670, 692, 644, 725 and 603. So lowest pronation velocity with the Mach 5 
5 and highest pronation velocity with the Cloud Monster. Another part of the video that I know you like um, a lot and I like it too, it's giving words about each shoe uh, to describe it, describe the feelings I have with it and um, you know not only the numbers but also those subjective uh, words and feelings I think are quite important and um, let's go through them. So 1080 um, plush, cushioned, but also bulky. Pack 39, uh, traditional, low to the ground, comfortable, and no brainer. Uh, Nova Blast, bouncy, energetic, fast, and versatile. Cloud Monster, surprising, low drop, because it says that it has a six millimeters drop, but I'm pretty sure it's more like two or one millimeters. It really feels like a low drop shoe, which is very interesting for the, for this one and we could discuss the Cloud Monster way more, but it's not the purpose here. So surprising, low drop, fun, and baggy upper. The upper is really baggy and it's kind of a drawback, but not a drawback depending on whether you have white feet or not. Mac 5, overall, confidence and heel striking. And now recommendations. So which shoe should you get depending on your uh, personal um, type of running? So if you're a heavy runner, I would recommend the 1080 or the Cloud Monster. If you're a light runner, I would recommend the Nova or the Mac, depending on your foot strike. If you're a cadence runner, Mac 5 is a very interesting shoe for you. Pegasus could work as well. Stride runner, Nova or uh, Cloud Monster. You could look at the 1080, but for some reason, I'm a stride runner and it doesn't really work for me as a stride runner, so I'm taking it out a bit. White feet. New Balance, Hoka, they both have, um, so if you're like wide but fitting in normal shoes, they're similar to be honest. Um, the Cloud Monster has a slightly um, more voluminous toe box, so you may it may work for you. Otherwise, the Hoka and the New Balance, they have um, extra width, so I think it's two sizes extra on the New Balance, so wide and extra wide and there's a wide size on the uh, Hoka. If you were to run a longer distance, let's say a marathon, which shoe should you be looking at? And for that, I would say the Nova Blast or the Clown Monster would be uh, nice if you're a faster runner. The 1080 would work really well um, if you're not that fast. If you were to run a longer distance or uh, say a marathon with one of these shoes, like you want to have one shoe in your rotation and that's perfectly fine uh, and you want to do your race with it, half marathon, marathon race with it, uh, even 10k. I would go for Clown Monster or Nova if you are looking at shorter distances and then I would look at the 1080 um, if you are looking at longer distance or you are a bit slower, that could be a nice option. Four foot strikers, Cloud Monster because of that supposedly lower drop than six millimeters than the six millimeters they are claiming at least. So Cloud Monster, it works really well for me as a midfoot four foot striker, heel striker, Mac 5, as you understood, the, it rolls really nicely from the heel and you enjoy that um, dual layer midsole if you are heel strike, striking a bit more than if you are midfoot striking. It works really well for all types of um, striking, but heel I think is, is maybe a bit better. I hope you enjoyed this video guys, uh, if so give it a like, subscribe to the channel, sorry, that really helps us. Uh, thanks a lot for watching, enjoy your run today, enjoy your ride and go beyond your limits. I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.